There you go, Skull. Now you can stand pointing alongside your little disciple. Uh, what in the? Oh, come on. When would Toy ever do something as crazy as this? I mean, what are they going to do next? Boy, buy their super robots or something like that? I mean, come on. When would they ever do something that insane? Oh, yeah. Gijinka, or the improvising of inhuman objects, has been a thing in fiction for a while, but has definitely taken a more defined turn in Japan with the integration of some good old moe. One of the earliest examples of this was created by a Japanese artist named Toy when they created some fan art of the iMac in 1988, which, oh wow. Uh, okay, I'll admit I never liked those oversized bread boxes, but if they ever use this character in their ads, then I might buy a few. Dozen. But yeah, Gijinka would slowly start to gain traction, again, this was 1998, during the more innocent years before the Bluebird arrived. Fan projects like Moemon would be made, and more Anthro OS systems like Windows Media would go viral on 4chan. Thus, of course it wouldn't be long before anime companies would try to capitalize on this trend, and in some cases, even start to use their own IPs. Nothing was off limits, be it game consoles, battleships, Gundams, or even whole freaking countries. Though so going back to that third thing, while Sunrise would design their own Gundam girls for build fighters in 2013, Truth be told, the super robots had kind of beaten them to the punch, as Toy had put in our little subject for today into production. Starting off as a little project to promote some of their super robot IPs, Toy Robot Girls was announced in March of 2009 at the Tokyo International Anime Fair. There, they reveal the banner with characters designed by Tetsuya Kawakami. He's probably best known for his work on 86, where he also served as the chief animation director. And just like his work on interviews with monster girls, he essentially designed some girls cosplaying as non-human entities, in this case, Bara Attack, Magne Robo Gakin, and Daiku Mayu Gai King. They would feature in a series of parody four-panel manga that ran from June 30th of that same year to February 26th of 2013. It was a tongue-in-cheek little comic pointing out the many memes and tropes that had spawned from their franchises, which will become more of a thing in just a bit, and over the course of the series, they would be joined by Waxe Robo, Dongard Ace. By the way, each of these girls have little pen names for each other, so that's what we're going to stick with calling them, both to distinguish them from their OG counterparts, and just to make things easier for me. Anyway, this is ultimately all built up towards an actual anime project, which started off with a pilot short produced by Toy and released in July of 2011 on Tokyo MX. And it amounted to just a little over a minute of anime, basically just an extended commercial, but damn if they didn't take full advantage of their limited amount of time to really show off how admittedly stupid and yet really fun a concept like this can be. After all, it was Precure beats mech anime, you know, outside of the Happy Robo, hence why it's gained this particular spotlight. More importantly, it was more meant to attract the attention of a certain someone and his production company. Yeah, you might have noticed, but we really haven't brought the Z part of this video's title yet, and that's because that IP more belongs to arguably the manga granddaddy of all super robots, Go Nagai, and his dynamic planning company. Hence why for this little pilot, Toy purposely didn't use any of the robots he created, and just stuck with the ones they had more solid claims to. Yep, none of these were the creation of Go Nagai in any way. Uh... Yeah, let's talk about that. For those who don't know, Gai King was the source of a lot of controversy for Toy. The original idea for the mech and its world were credited to Akio Sugino, Don Kobayashi, and Kunio Nakatani. However, Go Nagai claimed that it was his idea and that Toy was trying to worm their way out of paying him royalties. This led to a decade-long legal battle that left the two parties on bad terms for a while. Now, of course, these are still just allegations, and as far as I know, they've tried to keep the proceedings as hush-hush as possible, so it's hard to definitively say who was right or wrong in this case. That said, I personally wouldn't put past Toy to try and pull some shady business tactics. Yeah, don't think I forgot about those little copyright strikes from last year. 
Still, I guess time and money heals all wounds, and they've seemingly buried the hatchet for the most part, as the guy and Dynamic Planning agreed to cooperate in the production of our actual review subject for today. Starting with a zeroth episode that's still streamable on the Toy Video channel since July 29th of 2013, Robot Girl Z would be released monthly as 10 minute ONAs for the first 3 months of 2014. It introduced Team Z, who were pretty much the true main event characters of this little spin-off franchise. Yeah, nothing against the original team, who would later be named Team T for Toy, but let's face it, when most people think about Super Robots, they think about Golden Guy's Majinger family. You got my stuff. The team was composed of Majinger Z, aka Z Chan, Great Majinger, aka Grey Chan, and Grandizer, aka Grandasan. In between Episode 0 and the first shorts, a web manga would confirm that the girls were gaining their powers essentially from their hats that looked like the ships or piloters that the pilots of the robots would dock into their respective machines to control them. In the case of Z, she got hers from her grandmother, much like how Koji Kabuto received the Majinger Z from his grandfather. Yeah, do expect some gender bending for all the major characters of the Super Robot series, which I guess include the mechs, even though technically they don't have genders for the most part. Still, what would a gender bent version of Juzo Kabuto look like? I mean, he is one of the most iconic mad scientists in anime, even being parodied in other properties. I mean, they shouldn't be like the original anime and just disregard those prominent features. I'm sorry, I asked. They would later be joined by other Anthro Super Robots that Toy produced anime for, including Get a Robo and Steel Jig. In the case of the former, they even brought in some of the expanded universe, including upgrading the character into Get a Robo G and even bringing in the Team Go. Shin was never brought in, even though they certainly included aspects of the Armageddon. Still, just in case you weren't convinced this series was worthy of a magical girl spotlight, just look at some of these transformation sequences and try to tell me otherwise. Hell, since it is toy, they would end up having access to some previous and even future Precure VAs at the time. Most notably, there was Aya Hisakawa, who played the role of the RGZ's main antagonist, Baron Ashura, who I guess counts as a gender bend? I mean, for those who don't know, Ashura was originally a pair of star-crossed lovers who each had half of their bodies crushed by a cave-in, and then were sewn back together to essentially create the anime equivalent of Two-Face. However, in this series, Ashura was fully female, and the divine in her body was just fake with some foundation, as though she were Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 6, you know, just a little less racist. Seriously, what the hell, Roddy? Still, I digress. The ONAs were directed by Hiroshi Ikehada, whose experience with toy animation was limited only in directing a grand total of four episodes for the Precure franchise, from Sweet to Doki Doki. However, he did direct the Kyoto Pichan Magical Girl series for Tatsunoko Productions. This would be especially relevant here, as that's where he met the writer of this show, Kazuho Hyodo, who also head wrote Gundam Age, making for a good combo for this show. However, for this series, they would go in slightly more cynical and far more insane directions than either of those shows. Now, to be fair, anything created by Gonagai tends to be a tad bit over the top, and the RGZ do reflect this with their personalities that seem to be exaggerated versions of their respective pilots, like Koji's hot blood nature. However, for this show, they would up the cruelty just a little bit, and not for the villains. Hell, I would say they often came off as some of the most sympathetic characters, which is where a lot of the comedy came from, in the same way Mojo Jojo being the Powerpuff Girls' personal punching bag is hilarious. As a result of their antics, they even ended up making enemies with their hometown of Nerima. Jeez, as if they didn't already have enough problems with the Daikon brothers. But yeah, even for those unfamiliar with the many Super Robot references in this series, god knows I don't know more than half of this stuff without opening up a wiki, you can still very much enjoy the series if you enjoy some more sadistic black humor like I do with a little fan service. But yeah, in my opinion, it's a really fun production that doesn't take itself too seriously, even poking fun at a lot of toy animation's other productions, including Precure, Dragon Ball, and The Laughing Salesman, oh no wait, that's not one of theirs. But yeah, while that is more for the sake of parody, this series has legit collaborated with other IP and companies you wouldn't expect toy of all companies to work with, including Woozer, Imaichi Moe and Aiko, and freaking Pixiv. 
Yeah, Japan's equivalent of DeviantArt actually got its own full episode where they presented illustrations from some guest artists as well as credited fan art from their website. That is legit kind of awesome and I think something that more shows should do these days if only to show their appreciation for their fans. And to me, that's one of the biggest appeals for this little spin-off series. It feels like something that was made by the fans for the fans through its immediately more crass elements. It's the same kind of feeling I got from watching Occupy Ranger, which I would say this is kind of the equivalent of for Toy Magical Girls. And in that sense, I do feel like Toy needs to make more shows like this. I mean, even if you do find this kind of representation for super robots to be blasphemous, you do have to admit Toy Animation hasn't really given its audience this sort of good spirit acknowledgement in a while. I honestly miss this sort of fandom familiarity, as without it, a lot of their shows start to feel like they're just coming off the conveyor belt. Please be a good 35th. The point is that, while I doubt Toy would make darker, edgier spin-off specials for Pre-Cure like they have for Kamen Rider and even Super Sentai, seriously, they made a Kira Major spin-off where one of the main villains of that show offed a bunch of Yakuza, I think they should make more stuff like this if only to encourage a little more freedom for their creatives to give us some more unique stories. As for when and what we'll cover for this series, well, the former is still to be determined, but as for the latter, I would say we'll mostly just go with what's on this Blu-ray. Yeah, if you want my personal recommendation, I do suggest importing this Blu-ray. As of right now, it's pretty much the only official home video release of the series available until someone in the States license it. Which, considering some of the deeper licensing issues with each of these individual Super Robot series, that might not come to pass anytime soon. It also unfortunately doesn't have any English subtitles, but it does collect all of the episodes from the original run and the second season called Plus, along with those specials I mentioned, so it is a great deal. Though, if you really do need subtitles, well, I'm not suggesting anything verbally, but... Regardless, we will try to cover all these episodes in sets of three, which when you take out the openings and endings does equate to about the average anime episode length. We'll also try to point out all the Super Robot references we can, I just want to admit now I'm not a Super Robot expert, but at least we'll try to point out everything that's joke worthy. So we'll do look forward to it sometime in the future, and if at all possible, do check the series out, either through official means or others shall we say and until next time though for our phenomenal friends and uh uh oh looks like each time saw a cockroach <clears throat> better call my insurance agency <laughs>